we are uh, on an online class, all right? But then again, we still need to follow some um, certain house rules, okay? So just take a look at this photo here. As you can see, what they're wearing is uh, something decent, right? We don't need you to wear um, like coat or uh, we don't need you to wear um, blazers uh, while in class, but we need to make sure that we are wearing something decent. Okay, so um, please dress appropriately whenever you'll be attending classes. So no sleeveless, no backless, no low neckline, no see-through, no anything that's too revealing. Okay, because other students might not be comfortable um, seeing clothing that are too revealing. All right. Also, um, if you will be joining the classes, you need to update your Zoom name. Okay, the format is enrollment number and then your full name. All right, so that I would know if that person, that particular student, should really be included in that um, in that class. Okay, so that you will be admitted in the Zoom room. Next is be on time, so that we'll be able to start right away. Come prepared because you can review in advance. You can also do your research in advance. Um, mute your mic. All right, uh, so that. If ever you are not inside the house or if you are at, the, at your workplace, um, so that the other students will not be distracted with background noises. Also, turn on your camera if possible. Have good lighting. Find a quiet place so that you can focus as well. Uh, wear headphones if possible so that you can clearly hear me. Uh, stay attentive. So there will be instances where in there would be like small recitations wherein I would be asking the students to participate. So I do hope that you'll be able to uh, participate as well. Uh, raise your hand to talk. And finally, and most important one is be respectful. Okay. Now, who is ICSA? Okay. So before I introduce the course to you, uh, the course that we are offering, I would like to give you a brief background about our institution, okay? So the first one that we have here, um, Pioneer of IT and Management Online Education in Kuwait, okay? So ICSA is dedicated to providing the best quality of education without teaching expertise, okay? Also technical facilities. And with this, we welcome enrollees uh, regardless of nationality, of educational attainment, as long as the student is willing to learn, just like our, our student earlier, um, uh, she, she really had the drive to learn, right? She was really motivated to learn. So um, you are all welcome to uh, enroll in our courses here in ICSA. Okay. Also, we have here since 2001. So it means that the institution had been tested for so many years. Okay. Um, uh, being determined to continue striving hard for arranging and ensuring opportunities for the students for educational and personal development through a supportive learning environment. Also, we have here internationally recognized. Uh, that is because here in ICSA, uh, the courses that we are offering are aligned to different international standards. Therefore, once you graduate uh, from this institution, the diploma that you will be getting will be recognized or, uh, abroad, okay? Especially, especially that uh, uh, most of us, our goal is to work abroad, right? So no worries, the diploma that you'll be getting um, is recognized abroad, okay? Especially uh, in uh, the Diploma in Health and Social Care course, um, uh, it has a seal of a UK-based qualification recognized by Ofcol. Ofcol is the counterpart of CHED in the Philippines. So uh, the diploma is authenticated by DFA and assessed by WES or World Education System. And it is one uh, being used for immigration processing to countries like Canada, Australia, and the UK. Right? And also we mentioned here that it's trusted. Oops. Inter uh, trusted by international employers. Um, up, um, so here uh, we receive a lot of feedbacks from our previous students that they successfully landed a job um, uh, abroad. And if you'll be visiting our Facebook page, we have uh, or we receive a lot of feedback from our students um, leaving positive and good reviews about their experience here in ICS ICSA. And they are now working abroad. Okay, next. for. Uh, ICSA's vision, 
uh, it is to be internationally recognized as a premier information technology and administration learning institution, engage in the discovery of knowledge, integration, and their applications with the global perspective that educates through innovative, responsive, and career-oriented programs. And for our mission, ICSA is committed to the provision of quality education, which emphasizes high academic expectation in the field of information technology and administration to provide the students the knowledge and skills needed to succeed as individuals and as professionals, promote academic excellence, and provide opportunity to enhance student skills that will empower them to reach their potential, provide career-oriented programs with a primary focus on those programs that are innovative and responsive to the needs of students and employers, ensure the highest quality of learning, teaching, and professional practice in a technical technologically enabled environment and contribute to the advancement of IT and participate productively and responsibly responsively in a rapidly changing society. Now, why, why would you choose ICSA? Um, why not other, um, other institutions, right? That is because here in ICSA, we are offering competitive fees, okay? We want to make sure that your hard-earned money are going to programs that it really deserves, that uh, will produce a diploma that you will be used um, in the future as you work abroad or as you work uh, overseas, okay? And also, we are uh, uh, we always offer um, special uh, offer or promotions every month. So if you're interested to know what are those promotions, you can reach out to our admin later on um, because we have admins here uh, in this uh, orientation. So you can reach out to them and ask them right now so that you can get answers right away. Also, um, here in ICSA, we are offering diploma courses, not just certificates. So um, here, uh, uh, a diploma is more comprehensive and more technical, and it will enable you to get a better grasp of a specific subject. Also here in ICSA, we are offering um, multiple courses. Okay, so uh, we offer several courses. Uh, some of them are computer secretarial. We also have office management. We also have business management. Here uh, for the health and social care course, we have level three and level four. Okay, so um, you can actually visit our website to check the full list of courses that we are offering. We actually have several students that are um, taking more than one course at a time, especially if you are able to, you know, if your time can do it uh, and you have the funds and all, then might as well enroll to multiple courses if you can. Also, um, here in ICSA, um, you'll experience easy access to education. So, um, the reason being is because uh, the course that we are offering is available for distance learning, okay? So when we say distance learning, uh, according to Merriam Webster, they defined it as a method of study where teachers and students do not meet in a classroom, but use the internet, email, mail, etc. to have classes, okay? So again, the courses that we offer are online live interactive classes via Zoom. Okay, like this one. And also the lessons that we are providing, we have pre-recorded classes that you can watch anytime. Okay, meaning if you are on the way to work or if you are currently at work and you wanted to uh, watch a, a videos related to the course, then you can just uh, put in your earphones and listen to the recorded videos. Okay, of course, it would be better if you will be attending the Zoom classes so that if you have clarifications, you will be able to ask me right away, okay? And also, I just wanted to emphasize that uh, there will be no difference between face-to-face -face classes and live interactive classes because, again, we are using the latest technology and we also have this what we call student portal wherein all the um, uh, materials are uploaded there, okay? Now, as you can see here, we have um, students graduated from ICSA. It is more than 22,000, okay? It only means that a lot of students had really trusted ICSA and a, lar a large number of these 22,000 have successfully landed a job abroad. Now, 
Um, again, as I've mentioned earlier, the classes that um, this health and social care course that we are offering is a live um, uh, interactive uh, online interactive class. But if you have inquiries and uh, wanted to inquire personally in the office, uh, this is where ICSA is located. We have a branch in Kuwait City, which is in Malia. Kuwait City, office number 25, 8th floor, Panasonic Tower. We also have in Mahabula, block 2, street number 20, building number 163. It's the yellow building, first floor. In UAE, it's room 208B, Rolex Twin Tower, Vanillas Road, Diera, Dubai. And uh, we have several partners in the UK. Okay. All right. Now, uh, what is a caregiver? So we have here a person who tends to the needs or concerns of a person with short or long-term limitations due to illness, injury, or disability. Okay? So once we become caregivers, um, this is what we'll be doing. Okay? So according to Rosalind Carter, there are only four kinds of people in the world. So those who have been caregivers, uh, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who need caregivers. So those who have been caregivers, these are the previous care caregivers who are now working as instructors to new caregivers or those who had experience with caregiving and is able to apply on their personal lives. Next is those who are currently caregivers. So these are the ones who are currently employed as caregivers and um, they could be working in hospitals or care homes. And then those who will be caregivers, so these are the ones who are studying to become a caregiver. So if you'll be enrolling with us, you will fall into this category. And finally, those who will need caregivers. So these are the ones who will need our assistance. So this could be old people or sick people who cannot, who cannot attend to their needs. Okay. Now take a look at this um, uh, graph. So as you can see here, it mentioned here that in uh, this is the aging population, projected global popu population aged 60 years or over. So back in 1990, the number of old people was about 0.5 billion. Then in 2017, it rose to 1 billion. Then by 2050, it was projected that it will be 2.1 billion. Then by 2100, it was projected that the number of old people will, rose to, uh, will rise to 3.1 billion. Okay. So as you can see on the graph, the trend is increasing, right? It only means that at a later time, okay, we will be needing more caregivers. Okay? Therefore, the, dem the demand will also increase. Okay? So what happens if the demand increases? Of course, um, the salary, the benefits will go up as well. Okay? Now, now, I'll be showing you um, some of the things that caregiver does. So first, we assess the medical needs. Okay? So as caregivers, we don't just simply rely on what the doctors or what the nurses are telling. Okay? We also do our own assessment. We also check our, the status of our patients. And if we notice that there are any positive or negative changes on the patient, we should be able to relay those information uh, to, uh, to the health care team. Next is prepare a care plan. So we need to personalize the care plan that we will be providing to our patients uh, depending on their condition. Next is we assist our patients with basic needs. So several patients have a hard time doing their ADLs or activities of daily living like bathing, eating, um, toileting. Um, if you will come to think of it, those things are just like the basic things that we are doing on our daily lives, right? But some people, they are having a hard time doing that, especially the very old ones or the sick people, right? So as caregivers, we are helping them with that. Next is provide companionship. So one of the most essential but sometimes overlooked parts of caregiving is companionship. So in care homes where elderly patients are staying, sometimes they are having a feeling of loneliness. Okay? And in elderly patients, it may lead to serious health um, consequences, including depression. 
Also, we help them with housekeeping. So there would be patients that are having a hard time doing simple tasks, right? What more with maintaining a home? So there will be some tasks that they still wanted to do, right? Like um, folding the clothes or whatnot, but certain uh, tasks that are really hard for them, like vacuuming and all that. So we will help them with that, okay? Also, we monitor medications. So we are responsible for tracking their medications uh, and administering it to them in a timely manner, depending on the doctor's order. Also, assess your care plan regularly. So there is a saying that the only constant in life is change, right? So same goes with our patients. Their needs are constantly changing. Therefore, the care plan that we will uh, that we provided them should be adjusted as well. We also have here prepare meals. So um, some of them are not able to. Uh, uh, prepare their own meals, so we will help be helping them with that. Assist with transfer and mobility, so we will help them with like standing up, transferring to a chair, or transferring to uh, their wheelchair. Okay, and also we assist them with uh, uh, or we provide transportation. Okay, so those are the common roles of a caregiver. Now let's take a look at the perks of a career in caregiving. So the first one that we have here is flexible working hours. So as a caregiver, especially in the uh, other countries like the United Kingdom, you'll be given the option to choose either work only eight hours or 12 hours plus rest days and break time within your shift. So uh, that being said, you will really uh, have a lot of uh, work-life balance because um, you'll be able to manage your schedule. Competitive pay. So uh, later on in this discussion, I will show you the average pay that you may expect as a caregiver. The next is less administrative work. So sometimes the task that consumes more of our time is the administrative work, right? So as caregivers, our focus would be attending to the physical and emotional needs of the patient instead of the paperwork. We also have here diversified experiences. So you will have the opportunity to work across a wide variety of care settings that go beyond just homes, such as daycare uh, centers, nursing homes, and hospitals. Also growth opportunities. So our task as caregivers does not stop um, as being a caregiver only, like caregiver one, okay? So with our role, we get to learn from our experiences. Uh, we can undergo additional trainings, okay? And uh, additional studies that, uh, that may put us in a higher position uh, at a later time. Impactful job. Okay, so as caregivers, we touch our patients' lives. Uh, we leave an impact, okay? We build a close relationship that makes our jobs easier and more tolerable. Okay. Uh, high, and also we have here high demand. So uh, if you can remember the graph that I showed you earlier, so the aging population is increasing. Therefore, the demand is increasing as well. The higher the demand, the more um, benefits and salary we can expect. Okay. And also more one-on-one -on -one with patients. So you can dedicate your time and services to a smaller number of participants that are within your comfort range, okay? Allowing you to deliver a much higher standard of service and build stronger bonds with your patients, okay? Now, I mentioned earlier that I'll be uh, showing you the expected salary of a caregiver in the United Kingdom. So if you can uh, open a different browser in your laptops or open a browser in your phone, you might as well want to go to this website, which is xe.com. xe.com. So that you can do the conversion as well. So xe.com. So from there, you'll be given the option to select the uh, currency where you're at at the moment, as well as the currency in the United Kingdom, okay? So it mentioned here that the average yearly sal salary of a healthcare worker is 23,015 pounds, okay? So let's convert, all right? What is that? Feeling ko teacher din to ng IELTS. 
Th sorry, Mark. Okay, 23,000. 15. Okay, 23,015. So if you are in uh you are in Kuwait at the moment, um choose Kuwaiti dinar, but I suggest you select the currency where you are at right now so that you'll be, you know, you'll be more familiar with the conversion and all. Okay. So let's choose Kuwaiti dinar since a lot of you are uh in Kuwait at the moment. And then uh, sorry, for the first one, you need to select GBP. Sorry, GBP or British pound rather, GBP, and then to KWD or Kuwaiti dinar, okay? And then hit on the convert button. Okay, let's wait for it. If you're also using your phones, your laptop, you can also do the conversion, especially if you're not using or there you go. All right, so 23,015 British pounds is equivalent to 8,783 Kuwaiti dinars. So as you can see, it's a really big number, right? With this amount of money, you'll be able to save up for your, you know, for your future, for your uh, retirement. You can even send money to your family and all, right? So uh, I hope this in, uh, inspires you to uh, work or, or to finish a caregiver course so that you can eventually work in the United Kingdom. Okay, so now let's proceed with the course itself. So uh, again, this is called UK Diploma in Health and Social Care, also known as Caregiver Course. Okay, so this caregiver course that we are offering uh, actually has two levels. Uh, we're offering two two levels, okay? We have level three and you also have level four, okay? So for level three, uh, if you will be finishing the course, you will be getting a, a diploma that uh, has 60 credits. While with level four, you will be getting a diploma that has 120 credits. Now, who can, who can enroll in level three? So uh, you should... Um, you, you don't need to be a high school graduate. If you are high school level, it's fine. You can enroll in level three, okay? So long as you are 17 years and up and is able to communicate in English, both oral and written form. While in level four, you, are, uh, you should be at least high school graduate. Uh, if you are not high school graduate, it's fine. So long as you are a graduate of level three, um, oops, level three UK diploma in health and social care. Okay. And also, you need to be 18 years old and up and must be able to communicate in English, in English, both in oral and written form. Now, you might be wondering, why do we need to speak in English in class? Why do we need to uh, be able to communicate in English? That is because class, we are aiming to work in an English-speaking country, right? And of course, when we go there, when we go to the United Kingdom, we cannot uh, talk to the people in Tagalog, right? Or in your uh, in your language, right? So uh, might as well use this as a practice in speaking and writing in English. And also the requirements that you'll be submitting should be written in English, okay? Now, uh, for the qualification structures, uh, structure, um, students are required to complete six units for level three uh, to achieve 60 credits for, again, for level three diploma in health and social care, okay? And these are the uh, units. So for level three, there are four mandatory units and there are three optional units. For mandatory units, uh, you, we have introduction to health and social care. We also have communication for health and social care, promoting health in the population, and person-centered care. Now for optional units, you just need to select two among these three, okay? So we have understanding, uh, diabetes care, understanding stroke care, and understanding dementia care. And then for level four, um, same with level three, you need to complete six units to achieve the 120 credits um, required to gain level four diploma in health and social care. So uh, these are the units that you need to complete. First, you have the academic study skills, communicating in health and social care, an introduction to healthcare policy, reflective practice, managing people in health and social care, sociology concepts in health and ill health. Now, what are the requirements to pass the course? 
So of course, you you need to attend the live Zoom classes. So uh, there should be at least three Zoom attendance per month. Now, why do we need to uh, why do we need you to attend the classes? Because again, this is um, this course is a pure online course. So at you attending the classes, you making the attendance um, will serve as a proof that you really studied that you really attended the classes okay and that number of attendance will be submitting that to the uk because they will be looking for that as well okay they will not just look for uh, your requirements they will also look for your attendance because again that will be uh, that will serve as your proof that it's really you who attended the classes it's really you who did the requirements and all okay also at least a score of 40 on the rubric so that is the passing grade. Now, what are the requirements to achieve certification of the diploma? First, of course, you need to complete all the assignments. So for every unit, for every unit, there is um uh you need to answer one assignment. Okay. So basically you need to complete a total of six assignments. Okay. And also you need to fully pay the tuition fee. Okay. Now, here's the process in the uh, diploma acquisition. So after I check the assignment, uh, after after you submit the assignment and after plagiarism checking, um, I will be uh, I will be providing uh, grades or if it needs to be revised, I'll let you know. OK, as you can see here, we mentioned plagiarism checking. That is because the assignment that you'll be submitting should not be just copied from a different source. OK, you need to. Um, show there your original thinking, okay? If you will be basing it from another source, it has to be paraphrased, okay? You cannot copy word per word what the, uh, what the author from that different source uh, had said, okay? Also, we have here internal verification uh, by our academic manager for individual submission, uh, which would take one to three days, meaning after you submit it to me, after I check it, I will submit it to our academic manager for uh, for another checking, okay? And then changing of grades if needed, according to internal verification. After that, once uh, it uh, passed uh, uh, on her, so uh, the assignment will now be submitted to external verification. Now, this goes, your requirements, your assignments now goes to the UK, okay? So, uh that would usually take about three weeks. So if external verification has no issues, we will send the diplomas for authentication to Kuwait Embassy or Philippine Embassy in the UK, which would take more or less two weeks and delivery back to Kuwait is seven to 10 days, okay? Now, why are we showing this um, the diploma acquisition process? Because the course that we are offering um, uh, is uh, that you'll be enrolling to the regular class could be either 18 months or nine months, okay? The only difference between the two is the payment scheme, okay? Um, now, if you will be completing the, uh, if you will be completing all the discussion in nine months, it doesn't mean that you will be able to get the diploma uh, uh, right away after that nine months okay that is because uh, we we still need to send the uh, all your uh, requirements to the united kingdom and then they will send it back to us and all okay so again after nine months it's not instant that you'll be getting the diploma okay now uh, are there additional fees so authentication fees this is going to be optional okay um you can opt for your own authenticator but if you prefer apostille it's going to be additional payment of 40 KD. And uh, for embassy attestation, it's 20 KD. Okay. Now, um, here are the materials that you need to prepare. We highly encourage you to purchase your own material. Anyway, as caregivers, you'll be using this in the future. Okay. And then uh, here, um, we will also be conducting bonus lessons that uh, that are very helpful for you as you do your practice later on as caregivers. Okay. So first one is the BP apparatus, okay? So if you don't have the BP apparatus yet, also known as Figma manometer, I, uh, I encourage you to purchase an aneroid BP apparatus, okay? Aneroid BP apparatus. Now, if what you currently have is mercurial BP apparatus, uh, that's fine. 
uh, I will allow you to use that still because in Kuwait, um, this is still being used. But if you are just about to purchase, I suggest just buy Android BP. That is because uh, Mercurial BP apparatus is no longer allowed in other countries because um, this is uh, considered as uh, dangerous. Okay, It's already a toxic equipment. So they no longer allow this. Okay, So if you are just about to buy, please purchase Android. Ma'am, I only have the digital BP apparatus. I apologize but we cannot um, use this because you will not be able to learn the skill using the digital BP app, okay? Also, we need you to prepare a stethoscope, either single-head stethoscope or dual-head, okay? So we will also be using this one as we discuss the vital science discussion. And finally, we need you to purchase or borrow a glucometer, okay? Or um, I suggest you buy the set so that you can ensure that they are all of the same brand, all right? Because there are some that uh, have a different brand uh, of strips. And as they insert that on the machine, it's not working because the brand is different, okay? So I suggest please purchase the set so that uh, they are all compatible uh, with each other. Okay. Now, before I conclude or before we end this orientation, I would just like to leave this quote. So do something today that your future self will thank you for. Okay. So imagine yourself, uh, yourselves three to five years from now. Are you going to be thankful to yourselves that um, you take this course and have a better future? So I highly encourage you all to enroll uh, in our health and social care course. So take the first step now. Uh, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Okay. So uh, that's all. Uh, that concludes our orientation. But 